Mark Hale here for the New York Post at City Field with the uh, great Mike Vaccaro and the somewhat okay Dan Martin. And uh, we're going to be previewing this weekend's Subway Series, the Mets and the Yankees, actually the 15th anniversary of when the first Subway Series began in 1997. And Mike, let's look back a little bit to the Subway Series, one of the signature moments of this rivalry, which you wrote a big feature on today. The drop pop-up two years ago, June 12, 2009, at Yankee Stadium with Luis Castillo. Why was that such a defining moment in this rivalry? You know, you talk about how the, 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 the series tends to take the city over, and the stadiums, no matter which stadium they play on, it's always not evenly divided, but you can always hear both fan bases. And the shift from one to the other, when the ball's in the air, when the Mets fans in the crowd at Yankee Stadium, and I thought they were going to win the game, to when the ball gets dropped, was just monumental. And you think about where the teams were at that moment. The Yankees were struggling. They couldn't beat the Red Sox that year. They'd come off a loss to the Red Sox. The Mets were still fairly competitive. From that moment on, you see now from where the, uh, where the Yankees are now, where the Mets are now, it really is kind of a seminal moment in their two relationships together and also where they've gone separately. When you were researching the article and writing the article, what, what did you find most compelling about how much things had changed? Well, you know, at that moment in time, the Mets were still considered regular season bullies. Remember, I mean, for all their September and October miseries, 06, 07, 08, they still won a lot of baseball games those years. And they were still very competitive. They, were, they, they, they had just come off a, a very competitive series here against the Phillies. They were within shouting distance of the Phillies. They were in the wild card lead. So, uh, you know, the, yes, Jose Reyes had gotten hurt. Everybody thought he was going to come back soon. He never came back at all. All these things kind of built momentum after that series. I'm not saying that the pop-up caused all of that, right. but certainly it's a line of demarcation from when the Mets were almost on equal footing. With the, if you look what the Mets and the Yankees records were heading back to 2006, they were almost identical going into that weekend series. And obviously it's been a lot different story ever since. Dan, this weekend we're going to see a lot of players on both teams who are going to make their Subway Series debut, including Terry Collins, the Met manager. But it also looks like it could be the final season uh, that we see Carlos Beltran, Jose Reyes, and Jorge Posada in the Subway series as well. That's true and for all three of those guys they, they played in a lot of subway series and had a lot of big moments uh, and, and they're all in kind of different stages of their career. Right. For, for Reyes and, and Beltran their futures with the Mets are, are unclear. It looks like they're both going to be on their way out of town. Reyes not quite as certain because uh, there's still a chance that he might finish the year with the Mets but for Beltran he's, he's a really solid trading chip mm -hmm. and he's a real focal point for Mets fans and for Yankee fans. So I think people are going to be interested to see how, you know, how this all plays out. And this is kind of a, a, another big moment when they haven't had a lot of big moments for the Mets lately. And for Posada, obviously that's a, a different situation because people want to see well. right. if he has anything left. Sure. You know, he's not going to get traded. Is he going to get released before the next Subway Series? Is he going to turn it around? Is he going to be a regular DH? Who knows? I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff that we're going to find out over the next month. And I'm sure that Posada and the Yankees would love for, for him to turn it around starting this weekend. Mike, let's talk about Alex Rodriguez a little bit. We all know how important he is to this lineup. We saw that this week in Tampa and Baltimore. You were there in Tampa when he hit the two home runs. Now we're finding out that he's going to uh, have his hip examined on this homestand. Is this a concern now for the Yankees and for Alex? Well, I think anybody, anytime anybody gets examined, I mean, you, you hold your breath a little bit. Yeah. David Wright got examined the other day and he went up with a broken back. Right. Now, the Yankees don't tend to have that kind of luck, but you never know. And obviously, it did happen once before where Alex Rodriguez went in to get looked at and he wound up lo losing the first five weeks of the season. He's an older player. I know yep. people don't like to think about Alex Rodriguez as an aging player, but he's an older player. Uh, he's had a problem in that area before, and he seems to think that there's an issue. So uh, all those things together tell you that you, know, you probably aren't going to relax easy until he comes out of the examination with a clean bill of health. Uh, he has looked better in the last couple of days since he's talked about uh, wanting to get it checked out, but you know what? Uh, he plays a position that's terror on that particular part of his body. His, his swing is such to where, you know, every time he takes a swing, you think it could come out because he's in, pretty, he's in terrific shape, mm -hmm. but all it takes is a little bit of realignment problems and, and you have a lot of, and you would have a big problem with him. Uh, with him, so much of, of, of who he is is the fact that he's a physical specimen. He overpowers the game a lot of the time. And so you wonder that if he's a diminished player, diminished physically, how that would, you know, how that would bear out in, in his output and, and, and beyond that in the Yankee lineup. We have seen A-Rod pick it up this week at least. We have not seen that yet with R.A. Dickey, Dan, who's going to start tonight for the Mets. First time that he'll be in the Subway Series. He's one of the, the Subway newbies. The last time, and actually the only time, he started against the Yankees was seven years ago, back in uh, 2004. What, uh, 
what's kind of been Ari Dickey's problem this season after being so good last year? And is there reason to believe that he can kind of turn it around? Or is this pretty much what you think we're going to see from Ari the rest of the season? Well, that's the interesting thing about the knuckleball is that it's not like another pitch where you can work on certain things and pitching coaches can tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, Dan Worthen can, can give him pointers, but it's, it's a different relationship he has with, with Dickey than with his other pitchers. So it's up to R.A. to, to figure this out, and he seems confident kind of that he own. can. Uh, but, you know, it was last year just a flash in the pan for him. Uh, especially now, the Mets need him to turn things around and, and get back to the pitcher he was last year. They've gotten some really good performances from Dylan G yesterday and, uh, you know, some other guys, John Neese the night before that, with Ike Davis and David Wright down for, for the next week or so. You know, the, the starting pitching is even more important for them than it was before, and R.A. Dickey is a key piece to that. So, that, you know, against the Yankees in a big spot, you know, he, he's still confident in himself. He hasn't lost any of that, but, uh, but with a knuckleball, it's there or it's not. That's what makes it so, uh, so tough to to control for the pitcher and for, for the hitters. And Dan, I think you'll agree. I mean, that lineup that he's going to be facing tonight, if you have a flat knuckleball, there's going to be a lot of balls <laughs> flying out, out of the subway stadium. tracks. I mean, it's you think about that lineup again. I mean, you've seen what the Yankees have done to Wakefield sometimes. Now, Wakefield has handled the Yankees on other nights too, but when Wakefield's knuckleball through the years has been flat, those games have gotten ugly it's in ugly. a hurry. Yeah, it can be a tough lineup to get healthy against. Right. We'll see what happens uh, in the 15th anniversary of the Subway Series starting tonight in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium for Mike Vaccaro. For Dan Martin, I'm Mark Hale for the New York Post.